thank you all for being here. I'm Tanner with uh, Solar United Neighbors. Um, I got a bunch of my friends here and I'll pass the mic around in just a second for them to introduce themselves. Um, but I have <clears throat> just a quick note before we get going. We are gonna be doing this event bilingually. Um, so just be patient as we move back and forth between um, English and Spanish. I promise we'll, we'll cover everything in a timely fashion, but I uh, wanna be sure the information is accessible for everybody. Um, entonces, como, como mencioné, en inglés vamos a hacer esta presentación uh, a lo bilingüe. Um, queremos que haya uh, suficiente, suficiente tiempo para cubrir todos los temas. Entonces, vamos a tomar nuestro tiempo para explicar todos en ambos idiomas. Uh, soy Tanner Simiencax y trabajo con um, uh, Solar United Neighbors y soy parte del equipo de Colorado y ten, tengo aquí conmigo eh, mis amigos de Vote Solar y Green, eh, Green Latinos también y ahora voy a pasar eh, el micrófono a ellos para presentarse. Um, we're going to get started with Jasmine. I'll let her introduce herself first. Hi, I'm Jasmine. I am the Community Impact Specialist for the West Region at Sun. I um, work with volunteers and lead the volunteer program in Colorado. Emma? Hey, everyone. I'm Emma Searson. I'm a policy and advocacy campaigner with Soul United Neighbors, so I support all of our legislative and regulatory advocacy work in our West Region states, including Colorado. Claudine? Hello, everyone. My name is Claudine Custodio. I am the regulatory director for Vote Solar. Vote Solar is a, an advocacy group that aims to realize 100% clean energy, a clean energy future that is solutions driven and people first. Juan? Okay, uh, Juan Roberto Madrid with Green Latinos. I'm the clean transportation and clean energy policy advocate. So working to ensure that uh, our communities have access to clean transportation, electric school buses, electric vehicles and trucks. Um, and then also ensuring that our communities have access to renewable energy uh, for themselves as well. Soy Juan Roberto Madrid de Green Latinos. Uh, soy el clean transportation y clean energy advocate. Al caso es que trabajo en haciendo que nuestras comunidades tengan el acceso a, a vehículos eléctricos, trocas eléctricos y también que pueden participar en teniendo rooftop solar y otras uh, tecnologías así. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Gracias a todos. Eh, ya vamos a empezar con la presentación. We're going to go ahead and get started with the, the presentation now. Uh, we'll give it a second to, uh, to get it pulled up. Okay, awesome. So welcome everybody to our community meeting about net metering. Bienvenidos a todos y a todas a nuestra junta comunitaria acerca de la medición neta. Eh, antes de empezar, quiero pedirles perdón porque va a ser evidente que el español no es mi primer idioma. Entonces tengan paciencia conmigo eh, mientras doy la, la, la presentación. Uh, so moving on to the next slide here. I'm going to talk a little bit about who we are as Solar United Neighbors. Um, we're a vendor neutral national 501c3 nonprofit. Um, and I'd like to emphasize that neutrality piece whenever we talk about this, um, because we try and present uh, information as we, we see it in a way that's neutral for you all to, to sort of make the best decisions for you and your families. Um, entonces, eh, como Solar United Neighbors, uh, at the next slide, please. Um, somos una organización uh, neutral y sin fines de lucro. Y me gusta enfocarme en esa palabra neutral porque como uh, organización uh, somos un grupo neutral y queremos presentarles con la información que, que tenemos acerca de la energía solar y lo que está pasando en, en este, el, el mundo de la energía limpia. Um, y hacerle más fácil para ustedes hacer um, decisiones con eh, la información correcta. Um, y no queremos, pues, empujar eh, nuestras decisiones en ustedes. 
So moving on here, um, our theory of change at Solar United Neighbors is threefold. Uh, we help folks go solar, then we join together, and then the theme of tonight's conversation is fighting for energy rights. Um, entonces, como organización, tenemos una teoría de cambio que tiene tres partes. La primera es usar la energía solar y apoyar a la gente a convertirse a la energía solar. Eh, el segundo eh, punto es unirse. Y el tercero, eh, cuál es pues, el, el tema de esta noche, es defender los derechos de la energía. <clears throat> And as previously mentioned, we have our friends from Boat Solar and Green Latinos here. Um, Want to give a huge shout out to Claudine and Juan for their support of this event. And uh, hopefully, if you haven't before, you'll be able to connect with their organizations after this event. Um, entonces, como mencionamos antes, tenemos a nuestros amigos Vote Solar y Green Latinos aquí esta noche. Y quiero agradecerles a Claudine y también a Juan eh, por su apoyo de este evento. Y espero que ustedes puedan conectarse con sus grupos después de, de este evento si no lo han hecho antes. So tonight, we're going to be going over three big points, right? So the first one is, what is net metering? You're going to see that abbreviation NEM used a lot. Just know anytime you see NEM, it equals net metering. Uh, entonces, esta noche vamos a cubrir eh, tres puntos claves. La primera siendo, ¿qué es la medición neta? The second point we're going to talk about is what the state of Colorado is actually doing about net metering. Um, el segundo punto va a ser, ¿qué está haciendo el estado de Colorado acerca de la medición neta? And finally, we're going to close with a brief section on how you can get involved. Y finalmente, vamos a cerrar la conversación platicando acerca de cómo te puedes involucrar en este trabajo. So, to go ahead and get us started, uh, I'm going to pass it over to my friend Emma uh, so we can talk about what in the world net metering is. Great. Thanks, Tanner. Yes, let's start exactly there um, with the basics of net metering. So, at its core, net metering is a billing system for solar owners. Um, when you have solar panels on your home or your business, you probably know that there are some times of day when you are able to use all of the power that those panels generate yourself. Maybe you've got your AC and your fridge and your lights and a bunch of other devices running while you're working from home like I do. Um, but there are probably also times of day when your panels are producing energy, but you don't actually need all of it. So during those times, that extra electricity from your solar panels will just flow back into the local power grid um, where it can then flow to your nearest neighbor who happens to need some electricity at that time. And net metering um, is part of the system and it just ensures that solar owners earn fair credit on their electricity bill for that extra power that they generate and share with their neighbors through the local grid. So I'll pause there and let Tanner translate. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, entonces voy a explicar eh, lo que ya explicó Emma. Um, <clears throat> entonces, ¿qué es la medición neta? Eh, es un sistema de facturación para propietarios de sistemas solares. Cuando tienes paneles solares en tu casa o sea, en, tal vez en tu empresa, eh, probablemente hay momentos del día <clears throat> en los que utilizas toda la energía que generan. Tal vez para alimentar el este, aire acondicionado, tal vez la nevera o cualquier cosa que, que estás utilizando en ese momento. Pero también es probable que haya momentos del día en los que sus paneles generan energía, pero no la utilices o hay una producción excesiva. En esos momentos, esa electricidad extra, digamos, de tus paneles se devuelve a la red eléctrica y puede ir a tu vecino más cercano que necesite electricidad en ese momento. La medición neta garantiza que los propietarios de paneles solares obtengan un crédito justo, esa palabra es muy clave, un crédito justo por esa energía extra que compartan con sus vecinos. Great, thank you. 
Um, so jumping back into a little bit more on why net metering matters, um, the, the bottom line here is that without net metering, solar savings would be at risk. So what I mean by that is that reducing or even eliminating those net metering credits that solar owners receive on their bill, or even just changing the structure of how those credits are applied over time would make it harder to achieve meaningful savings over a reasonable period of time. So what that means is it would take longer for folks to earn back their solar investment in savings. And that means that fewer Coloradans would feel confident enough to make that investment long-term. And if that happens and we see fewer Coloradans going solar as a result, it will then be even more difficult for Colorado to reach its ambitious clean energy goals. Entonces, la cuestión que, que tenemos ahora es cómo funciona la medición neta. Eh, con la medición neta, los propietarios eh, obtienen un crédito de 1 a 1 en su factura de electricidad por la energía extra que generan. Y en otras palabras, esa energía solar que generan, generan y comparten con sus vecinos se valora al mismo precio que la energía de la, este, la, la compañía eléctrica. Eh, como mencioné, Cal Colorado cuenta con una política estatal que obliga a todas las compañías eléctricas a ofrecer un crédito justo, o sea, un crédito uno a uno, de medición neta a los clientes con energía solar. Esta política garantiza que los propietarios de sistemas solares reciben un crédito justo que les permita recuperar su inversión eh, de, de su factura mensual de electricidad. Um, I'll, oh, I, I pass it back to you. I about got ahead of myself. <laughs> no, all good. Um, so as I, I also got ahead of myself and did this in the reverse order, so my apologies to you. But as Tanner just explained in Spanish, the details of how net metering works is that under net metering, solar owners earn a one-to-one -one credit on their utility bill for extra power. So in other words, the solar power they generate and share with their neighbors through the electric grid is valued at the exact same price point as power that they purchase from their electric utility when their panels aren't generating enough. Um, so what that means is that they can directly offset their bills with, solar, um, with their solar generation at a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and Colorado has a statewide policy that requires all electric utilities to provide that full retail rate, one-to-one -one net metering to customers that have solar power. And that essentially ensures statewide that solar owners receive fair credit and are able to earn, earn back their investment in a solar rate over time by offsetting a, a significant portion of their electric bill. Ya nos confundimos un poco, y, y, eh, pero eh, ahora voy a explicar lo que, lo que dijo Emma acerca de por qué es importante la medición neta um, y por qué es un buen negocio o, o pues um, uh, algo que ayuda a todos los habitantes de Colorado. Eh, pues sin la medición neta, el, el ahorro de, eh, en energía solar estaría en peligro Um, reducir o al eliminar los créditos de medición neta o tal vez a cambiar la estructura de cómo se aplican esos créditos haría un poco más difícil conseguir ahorros significativos en un periodo de tiempo razonable. Se ocuparía más tiempo en recuperar su inversión solar en ahorro y eso significa que menos habitantes de Colorado se sentirían seguros para hacer esa inversión a lo largo plazo. Y si eso sucede y vemos que menos habitantes de Colorado, eh, Colorado utilizan la energía solar como resultado, será aún más difícil eh, para Colorado alcanzar sus ambios, uh, ambis, ambiciosos objetivos de energía limpia. Um, también, como, como, eh, como di eh, dije, um, o como ya mencioné, Um, la, la energía producida por eh, la energía solar, eh, si es en exceso, va a ayudar a, a sus vecinos, pero también tiene un impacto muy importante um, en eh, lo ambiental, eh, lo medioambiental de Colorado y también um, en este, eh, eh, la economía de Colorado. 
eh, la energía solar fomenta un sistema energético más seguro y resistente y cuando más vecinos nuestros tienen energía solar, todos nos beneficiamos de un sistema energético eh, menos vulnerable. La energía solar también aporta otros beneficios eh, compartidos como un aire más limpio, como lo dije, eh, y, y esa economía fuerte. Um, ahora en Colorado eh, tenemos <coughs> casi eh, 330 empresas solares, más de 7 mil puestos de trabajo solares y casi 5 mil millones de dólares eh, que han sido invertidos en eh, la energía solar hasta e esta fecha. Y nosotros, como Solar United Neighbors, eh, creemos que solamente ya estamos empezando con, con este trabajo. So I think that wraps us up with this section. Was there anything else you were going to add on, Emma? I think I, I don't think I got to that last section that you just explained in English. So I can, I can run that back real quick and then I think we made it. Um, so that last bit that, that Tanner just explained is that, um, is one of our, our, key, our kind of core beliefs at Sun, which is that net metering is a good deal for all Coloradans. Um, and what I mean by that is, is rooftop solar lowers electricity costs for everyone, not just solar owners. It does that by reducing the need for investment in things like new power plants and transmission lines, which are really expensive. Um, and it also makes the power grid operate more efficiently. Um, and then on top of that um, kind of tangible or, or cost benefit, there are a lot of other values that solar provides to everybody. Um, for one, it fosters a more secure, resilient, and reliable energy system because when more of our neighbors have solar, we all benefit from a less vulnerable power supply. Um, and it delivers um, shared health benefits and environmental benefits like cleaner air. And um, lastly, I'll add that rooftop solar contributes to a strong local economy. Um, it helps create, create good local paying jobs, <laughs> good paying local jobs, there we go. Um, Colorado has around 330 solar companies in the state, over 7,000 solar jobs, and has benefited from more than $4.9 billion in total solar investment. Um, and that's really just getting started. There's so much more um, solar growth to come. And um, net metering is just a really important part of this bigger picture. It's critical to keeping rooftop solar growing in Colorado so that you know, we can all keep enjoying more and more of these benefits over time. Um, and that's why we want to protect it and make sure that um, that exactly that can keep happening. So I think that's all we've got. Thanks, Tanner. So, yeah, thank you, Emma. So moving on now, um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what Colorado is doing about net metering. Um, eh, siguiendo a, al eh, próximo tema, vamos a hablar un poco sobre qué está haciendo el estado de Colo Colorado acerca de la medición neta. So moving on here to the next slide, <clears throat> we know that um, last year there were some utilities that began to talk amongst themselves about uh, what, a, uh, what a potential future moving away from net metering may look like. And while we are not involved in these conversations, we do know that this coincided uh, with a number of other states who were sort of discussing or had moved on the same issue. This includes states like California, Nevada, West Virginia, so on and so forth. Um, this spring, the Colorado Energy Office decided to take up the conversation a bit more broadly and invited a number of utilities, solar advocates, solar industry representatives, um, and equity-focused community-based organizations to the table. It really seems that the overarching goals of these meetings um, have been to determine how we can maintain a really vibrant solar industry while also making clean energy more accessible for all Coloradans. You know, we, uh, we believe in those goals. We think that they're great goals uh, but at the same time, we do maintain a slight degree of skepticism, as we know that this historically has not been the intention of most utility companies. Uh, entonces, eh, lo que sabemos acerca de, de esta pregunta de, de qué está haciendo el estado de Colorado, um, sabemos que el año pasado eh, unas compañías eléctricas empezaron a hablar entre ellas sobre eh, cómo podría ser mm, eh, el futuro de la medición neta. Aunque no participamos en esas conversaciones, 
sabemos que coincidieron con otros estados que estaban pues platicando sobre el, el, mismo, el mismo tema. Eh, por ejemplo, sabemos que esto fue pasando en California, Nevada, West Virginia y otros lugares también. Um, eh, la primavera de, de este año, sabemos que la Oficina de Energía de Colorado decidió en, pues, ampliar la conversación y invitar a la mesa a, a varias compañías eléctricas, defensores de la energía solar, representantes de la industria solar y también organizaciones comunitarias enfocadas en iniciativas equitativas. Eh, parece que, que pues a nosotros que los objetivos generales de estas reuniones y conversaciones han sido determinar cómo podemos mantener una industria solar vibrante y al mismo tiempo hace, uh, hacer que este, la, la energía limpia sea más accesible para todos los habitantes de Colorado. Y creemos que, que esos objetivos, um, esos, esas metas son importantes, pero de todos modos sabemos que hablando pues históricamente, esto no ha sido la, la intención de la mayoría de las compañías eléctricas por todo el país cuando se suben estas conversaciones. So, getting in a little bit more um, on this next slide to what we're expecting. Um, we're expecting an announcement in the coming months from the Colorado Energy Office. Uh, we're, we believe that they're going to issue a proposal on how the state should proceed with net metering. And as of now, it's it's not certain what that proposal is going to look like, right? We don't we don't have it in front of us. Um, but that being said, we are pre preparing for all scenarios, including the good, the bad, potential middle ground. Um, we're in a wait and see kind of moment right now, which uh, is important for us to be having this conversation. Um, once we actually have a proposal on the table, we'll be following up with you all and others to discuss how you can get involved, but I beg you to not leave just yet uh, because we do have some concrete things for you at the end of this call. Uh, entonces, ahora eh, voy a hablar acerca de, de lo que esperamos de estas conversaciones que están pues, pasando al nivel estatal. Um, ahora, o pues en breve, estamos esperando que la Oficina de Energía de Colorado Um, ofrecen una propuesta sobre cómo debe proceder eh, eh, el, el Estado con la medición neta. No, eh, en este momento no está claro qué implicaría esta propuesta, pero eh, lo importante es que nos, nos estamos preparando para todos, eh, todos los escenarios, siendo el, el bueno, el malo o posible algo que cae en la mitad. Um, una vez que esto suceda, nos pondremos en contacto con ustedes y, y otras personas y otros grupos um, para platicar sobre, com, eh, sobre eh, todos podemos participar en, en este proyecto. Uh, pero eh, les pido que ahorita no se vayan eh, porque esta noche todavía eh, tenemos algunas maneras inmediatas para que puedan participar ahora mismo. Um, so at this moment, I'm actually going to pass it over to our friend Juan to talk a little bit about some of these conversations as he has been involved in them. Um, and we can just keep it on the, the same slide. Uh, se la voy a pasar a Juan para platicar un poco más sobre este tema. Yeah, thank you, Tanner. Gracias, Tanner, por uh, el micrófono. Uh, thanks for passing over the mic. Um, I was able to, as a member of Green Latinos and the Clean Transportation, Clean Energy Policy Advocate, um, was able to engage in these meetings as a invited uh, component of the the Governor's Work Workforce Group, um, being that Green Latinos is an environmental justice uh, serving organization. Fui fortunadamente tuve la habilidad de estar en esta reunión con el gobierno y los directores de las empresas de servicios públicos, co co cooperativas eléctricas y empresas y aso aso asociaciones 
the energia solar. Um, so with the makeup of um, the most of the utility companies and the municipal co municipal utilities and uh, co-ops and some of the um, solar industry uh, installers and uh, companies sitting at that table it was interesting to to see how uh, former Governor Ritter wanted to have a level set with the focus or the lens being uh, an equity lens as we discussed the net metering and where it is in the state and where it should go. Uh, como estaba diciendo, eh, tuve la oportunidad de, sen de sentar en la mesa y participar en estas negociaciones con el el gobierno pasado, gobierno Ritter, y lo que me hizo, bueno, un poco extraño es que querían que la mesa estará presente y que todos en estas conversaciones, que todos tenían la misma ojo de ver estos negociones con la ojo de equidad y cómo todos pueden tener equidad, ¿verdad? Los, los, que, tienen, los que ganan bajas ingresos, los que viven en zonas impactadas por energía y por polución de, de trocas. Uh, entonces fue, me, fue extraño de que todos estaban viendo por ese ojo. And so with that, right, it was definitely um, eye-opening. And I think some of my partners, because the language was so technical um, and dealing with technical concepts, it was, uh, there was not a level set for all of my counterparts from the environmental justice community um, when talking about some of these technical issues. Acabo de decir que participando en estas uh, conversaciones, porque fueran conversaciones técnicas y sobre temas de electricidad, de electricidad de solar, um, muchos de mis compañeros de justicia ambiental no tenían la información porque fue muy técnica las conversaciones. Y en eso, bueno, es que no había equidad en, en las conversaciones, ¿verdad? Porque uno, si uno no sabe de lo que están hablando, aunque es inglés y uno entiende inglés, ¿verdad? Es difícil cómo compartir y saber uh, poder dar su opinión. So, with that, um, I, I just explained in Spanish that it was difficult, I think, uh, for some of my counterparts who did not have that uh, a good grasp of the technical abilities. And so with that, not having that technical ability, then it's hard, right? It's a, though they're speaking English, they might as well have been speaking another language if you're not understanding the technical abilities. I will say in general, though, there was a general goodwill amongst all the parties to negotiate in good faith about where the net metering is now and where it should go in the future. Sí, dije que estaba yo, puedo decir que claramente que todos que estaban en la mesa uh, hablando sobre estas negociaciones Estaban hablando con un intento de, 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 un intento de, de hacer el trabajo todos juntos, en vez de uno decir, bueno, pues no voy a participar un poco, pero no voy a cooperar. Fue, creo que todos estaban cooperando y sobre ese tema de, de la medida neta y cómo puede ser justo para todos los uh, compañeros que estaban y para todos los que 
van a poner solar en su casa. Um, and so that was, uh, I think, though there were tough conversations, uh, I think in general there was a consensus amongst all the members there that um, low income and disproportionately impacted uh, community members should retain that NEM, that net metering one to one, um, as those uh, community members from disproportionately impacted communities and income qualified communities, as they rise up in their uh, stature and find the ability to become homeowners, um, that they have access to the to the benefits and to the plans and some of the incentives that are currently out there on the market versus having those taken away, which would uh, reduce, create even more burden. So, acabo de decir que todos que estaban en la mesa estaban más o menos juntos en la decisión de que todos pudieran tener la medición neta. Todos los que, tiene, que vienen de comunidades de bajos ingresos y de comunidades impactadas disproporcionalmente, que así como cuando ellos van subiendo en su nivel y pueden tener bastante ingresos para comprar un casa, que también pueden participar en poner solar en su techo para tomar la, la habilidad de usar energía limpia y bajar sus costos de electricidad. Y así es que todos en general estaban de acuerdo de que para los que están en esos bajos, bajos ingresos y los que vienen de comunidades impactadas que pueden retener ese... NEM de uno a uno. And, uh, but it was definitely interesting to hear, right? Because there were a lot of uh, nuance to, uh, to time of use, um, you know, net metering. And I think uh, under that equity lens, there was that broad in the after several months of meetings uh, at the end, there was that uh, broad concession that uh, there should be that opportunity for low income and income qualified customers. And I'll, I'll pass it back over to Tanner. Awesome. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, for sharing your uh, experience in that group. I think it's a really uh, like critical lens to, to bring to this space um, and appreciate you making time to, to share. Uh, entonces, mil gracias, Juan, por eh, compartir su experiencia en trabajar en esa, esa mesa con el eh, equipo de, de la Oficina de Energía de Colorado, eh, porque creemos que, y yo creo que es, es un pues, punto de vista muy importante y eh, impactante también eh, tener cuando tenemos, tenemos estas conversaciones acerca de eh, qué es la medición neta y qué va a ser el futuro de, de esa política. Uh, entonces, mil gracias por eh, compartirlo. Um, so, we are, uh, we've covered a lot in a relatively short amount of time. So, going to do just a really quick review of the highlights of what we've discussed so far. Um, and some of those are that we believe that net metering right now is a fair crediting system uh, that helps rooftop solar makes sense for all Coloradans. Um, it benefits everyone, especially uh, yourself and your neighbors in, in those times of excess generation. Uh, we believe that net metering benefits Colorado's renewable energy goals and creates cleaner air and a stronger economy. Um, we reviewed that the state has been discussing the future of net metering for the past handful of months. And finally, that we're expecting a proposal from the Colorado Energy Office soon. Um, entonces, vamos a hacer un breve repaso de, de lo que ya hemos platicado, eh, porque ya hemos eh, cubrido 
eh, cubierto eh, muchos temas en eh, un, un breve periodo de tiempo. Um, entonces, lo que hemos eh, dicho es que creemos que la medición neta es un sistema de crédito justo que ayuda a que pues, la energía solar tenga sentido para todos los habitantes de Colorado. Eh, también sabemos que la medición neta beneficia, uh, beneficia a todos, eh, especialmente eh, tú o a tus vecinos en tiempos cuando produ uh, produces energía en exceso. También la medición neta beneficia a los objetivos de energía renovable eh, de Colorado y crea un aire más limpio y una economía más fuerte. También hemos dicho que el Estado ha estado discutiendo o eh, eh, hablando acerca del futuro de la medición neta durante eh, los meses pasados de, de este año y pronto esperamos una propuesta de la, ofic eh, de la Oficina de Energía de Colorado. So now we are gonna, gonna go ahead and take a look at um, some of the immediate ways that you can get involved. Entonces ahora vamos a hablar un poco sobre de manera inmediata cómo te puedes involucrar en este trabajo. So uh, taking a look at your screen here, you're going to see sort of a snapshot of uh, one question of a survey that we're going to be sending out um, at the end of this. And I admit, at first glance, this looks like a lot. It looks like we're going to be asking you to like take on the world and more. Um, that is not what we're. <laughs> that's not what we're asking you to do. Um, we have been doing a number of things already throughout the course of this process. Um, one really simple thing that we've been doing is helping folks send emails uh, to the governor's office, to the Colorado Energy Office. Um, to let folks know broadly that Coloradans um, still care about this issue and um, want to see the state continue to support solar and care about making it accessible for everyone. Um, if you haven't taken this action yet, um, everybody that RSVP'd for this event will be getting a follow-up email um, and you'll be able to do so through that email. Um, as I mentioned, the survey is really meant to capture Um, your level and interest in participating. And I shared this piece to show sort of the number of different opportunities that you could have. Um, if you only have like a couple of minutes every few months to join our work, that is absolutely fine. Uh, we have and are going to have plenty of really simple actions that only take seconds to you know fill out and send in. Uh, but those are the actions that really support at a broad level the work that we're doing. Um, if you're wanting to be more involved, you can see here that we have plenty of options for that as well. Um, some of these things will be more future looking. Some will be in the coming months. Um, as you fill this out, it'll be you know easy enough for us to get in touch and, and talk about what your level of interest might be. Um, regardless, uh, we really hope that in the survey, Uh, you're going to be able to let us know if you sort of feel up to speed on what's happening with net metering in Colorado and if and how you would like to join. Um, entonces, mientras vemos la, la pantalla aquí, um, dije en inglés que parece que estamos preguntándote a hacer eh, todo lo posible, eh, pero eso no es, no es la verdad. Um, porque tenemos varios, eh, pues, varias maneras Uh, por las que te puedes involucrar en este trabajo. Y eh, pues esta, esta pantalla solamente es una demostración eh, de las opciones que, que tienes. Um, eh, ya hemos estado ayudando a, a mucha gente a hacer pues a acciones más sencillas como enviar un correo electrónico a la oficina del gobernador y la oficina de energía de Colorado. Uh, para hacerlos saber uh, que los residentes de Colorado todavía apoyan la energía solar y se pro, uh, preocupan de pues, cómo hacerla más acces accesible para todos. Um, si, no has, eh, eh, si no has hecho esa acción, van a tener la oportunidad porque cada persona que se registró por este evento va a recibir un correo electrónico después del evento 
um, y, y ese correo va a tener la acción um, ahí. Um, como pueden ver, hemos eh, preparado una encuesta eh, para que podamos eh, ponernos pues, en contacto con ustedes. Eh, después de, de esta llamada, um, le, les pido que llenan este, esta encuesta um, y, y dinos si quieres participar en el trabajo que sigue. Um, y como dije, tenemos varias opciones. Si solamente tienes un par de minutos cada mes o cada semana para apoyar este trabajo, um, no te preocupes. Eh, tendremos acciones muy sencillas que tardarás segundos en completar, eh, pero que apoyan muchísimo a nuestro trabajo. <coughs> trabajo. Eh, si quieres participar más, um, como pueden ver, esta encuesta va a tener una variedad de opciones que puedes selec seleccionar para decirnos de qué forma te gustaría participar. Um, y sé que eh, ahora solamente está en inglés, pero cada encuesta que recibes va a tener opciones en inglés y español um, cada, para que puedan escoger eh, cómo te gustaría participar. Um, de to todas formas, eh, háganos saber en la encuesta si se siente al, eh, pues al tanto de lo que está, su el, eh, está sucediendo. Eh, con la medición neta en Colorado y cómo te gustaría unirte. Ok, um, so I think that this brings us pretty much to the end of the presentation. I want to thank you all so much for being here. Um, you all are really like, uh, we call this a community meeting for a purpose. We know it's like a statewide thing and you could be joining from anywhere, but um, you all are folks that care about this issue and um, we are too, and we feel like we're a part of the same community and that this is something important for us to take on together. Um, entonces, quiero agradecerles a todos por su participación en este evento. Eh, lo llamamos en eh, una junta comunitaria con uh, razón, eh, porque ustedes son un importante clave, eh, sin importar dónde estás, de este trabajo. Y creemos que ustedes... Y nosotros eh, formamos eh, una parte de esta comunidad de, de energía limpia, energía solar. Um, so we're going to hang around here for a few more minutes. And I've already seen that we've got a couple of questions um, in the chat. I'm going to pass it over to some of my friends here to start answering those because I've been talking a lot and need a sip of water. Um, <laughs> entonces vamos a, a empezar eh, con un periodo de, de preguntas y contestas por los 15 minutos que, que nos faltan y, y se la voy a pasar a, a mis amigos aquí para contestar las preguntas que, que tal vez tienen. I'll volunteer myself to get us started um, with Marcus's question in the chat, um, if that's okay with everyone. Um, Marcus, thank you for this question. It's a really good one. Um, it is kind of two questions, I think. So I'm going to start with the net metering component and then I'll pivot over to the battery component. Both great topics to get into. Um, one, you are right. What we're talking about is one-to-one -one net metering is sometimes one-to-one -one and sometimes not quite. So for anyone who's wondering what Marcus was referring to, um, folks who, uh, folks who are customers of Excel, which is an investor-owned utility, can choose to either perpetually roll over any extra credits, like if they've offset their whole bill and they have extra net metering credits to roll over, they can just keep doing that, or they can choose to cash them out. And if you cash them out, you don't get that full retail rate, um, you get less. Um, so that is correct. And it's also true that if you're on a time of use rate, um, your uh, solar credits are worth whatever um, that rate was at that time. So if you're producing extra solar power and sharing it into the grid during peak grid times, that those credits are going to be extra valuable. They might actually um, you know, be more than one-to-one -one, um, compared to what you're paying at other times of day. But on the flip side, if you're producing most of your extra power and sharing it to the grid at times when the power that power is not as valuable, then you're probably getting less than one-to-one -one offsets at the end of the day when it like all um, averages out over the course of the day. Um, so I hope that made a little bit of sense. I was just trying to to translate that question um, for for others who may not um, you know have solar or have um, quite as much uh, familiarity with the ins and outs of their power bills. 
Um, I wouldn't say that I think we've lost the net metering battle. I think that, um, you know, not being able to fully cash out and receive payments is fairly common since net metering is really meant to be a way of, to offset your electricity costs as opposed to being a way to like make money. Um, so, you know, while it's, uh, there are some, there are some nuances there. I think all, all things, um, considered the net metering policy in Colorado is, is a pretty good one. Um, and then, and pivoting over to your question about batteries, um, I think you're absolutely right that batteries represent a new, or at least newer, um, like revenue stream or savings stream for customers. Um, I think that could be, should be in addition to what you can do with, um, with solar net metering as is. Um, but there are a couple different ways that batteries can help like further um, reduce costs and that um, policy can help address the upfront cost of batteries, which are of course expensive. Um, one, there are some existing like federal tax credits for installing batteries that can help kind of offset those initial, um, you know, installation costs, the same investment tax credit that can cover up to 30% of the cost of going solar can apply to batteries. So that's just good to know. Um, there are also some state and um, sometimes utility level rebate programs to help offset the costs of batteries, um, which can be super helpful. Um, and then one kind of evolving policy area that Sun is really excited to work more on um, is uh, distributed power plants, which is basically just a term for when um, a provider, uh, you know, controls multiple home batteries all at the same time remotely. Um, so they kind of function like a power plant. So they can, you know, feed extra energy into the grid at times when it's most needed. Um, these are really uh, neat tools to kind of meet grid needs, but also to credit homeowners fairly for the, you know, really valuable service they're providing to their neighbors when they participate in a distributed power plant. Um, so Colorado just passed a bill um, directing the, the Public Utility Commission um, to develop, develop a distributed power plant or virtual power plant, some people say, program. Um, and we're excited to work with our friends here and plenty of others to make sure that that um, program is as beneficial as it can be. One thing I know Sun will be um, you know, calling for is a combination of both upfront payments and also performance-based payments over time for participants in that program. So that helps address the upfront costs, but also provides kind of an ongoing source of savings. Um, so sorry, that was a long answer. That was a really good question. So I wanted to make sure to cover it. <laughs> I don't know if Tanner or others have anything to add to, to that. I have nothing. I did see that we got another question about uh, VPPs or virtual power plants. Um, I think the short answer is yes, we are following it. Um, I don't know if any, Claudine, Juan, Emma, if you all wanna talk any more about the work that um, you all may be doing uh, around VPPs specifically in Colorado. Uh, it is on my radar. Um, I've, we are waiting for the plan uh, that Excel has for it. So we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, and I would definitely, to, to Trina's comment in the chat, I would recommend if you are an Excel customer, um, taking a look at some of their uh, solar rewards incentives, sort of broad-based. Um, they have a, a few different incentives, both for batteries and for solar installations. Um, I'll save like my shameless pitching for one-on-one -on -one conversations if anybody has any, any questions about it, but um, definitely a fantastic recommendation. Any other questions? And if they're not, we're not holding you hostage, so you can go at any point, but. <laughs> Looks like Marcus has his uh, hand up in the chat. Okay, I see a couple of hands going up. Um, I am not the Zoom extraordinaire on this, so I'm not exactly sure how to like help. Okay, there we go. I think Jasmine's doing it. Marcus, I think you're able to come off mute now if you if you're able. Uh, thanks for addressing my questions. I actually don't have any other ones. 
Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, Charlie, I can I can get to your question. The timeline for possible changes. Um, like I said earlier, we're sort of in waiting mode right now, but we do anticipate a proposal um, sometime in August is what we're expecting um, to see. Um, and then depending on what that proposal actually looks like, the most probable scenario is that it will turn into legislation in 2025, but we are on standby in case it becomes um, like a regulatory item that moves through the, the Public Utilities Commission, um, in which case the timeline could either be um, shorter or longer. We would have to, to wait and see uh, how that would be implemented. Uh, Carlton has joined us. Carlton, you're welcome to come off mute if you have a question. Hi, yes. Can you hear me? Hello. Gotcha. Um, I have uh, a problem. I had a problem where my system was knocked out. Uh, my solar system was knocked out by my uh, fuse box. Uh, because it was arcing, and I uh, months before that I didn't pay any bill. I was uh, not. I had enough electricity, so I failed to look at my bill, uh, and for two reasons. One, uh, it's I couldn't read it to to find out what the excess was, like you guys talked about, but also. Um, why doesn't both uh, Excel and my solar company um, <clears throat> have an AI function where it can let you know that your system has been knocked out? Uh, so eventually, I I looked at my bill and I was paying you know full price for my electricity. So the question is, well. Before that, let me just say that it seems there's no incentive for them to uh, do anything about it because they could make more money with the power that I'm giving to them. But um, I, I'm paying for it, I guess I should say, instead of using my solar. Is the, does that make sense? Yeah, I think all of that is... Uh... A really good question, and there are definitely a lot more particulars that I would like to know. Um, I will say, while this might not be the the best space to have like this particular conversation, we do offer at Sun um, consultations where we have folks that are more well versed in like those issues with installers that can look at the uh, like problems with your particular system and sort of troubleshoot with you. And so, what I'd recommend, and I'll put this email in the chat for everybody to see. Um, if you're able to just email, what is our email? Solarunitedneighbors.org. Um, CO team at solarunitedneighbors.org. If you have any of those uh, more technical questions like related to your own system, um, we can easily follow up and set up one of those calls just so we can get sort of to the, the root of what, what's going on. If that, if that works for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. All right, um, a couple of other rapid fire questions <clears throat> here. Um, engage people from Trina on the income qualified program CEO offers community solar, solar heat pump. Okay, um, so Solar United Neighbors does not directly engage on the community solar options or the solar and heat pumps through the weatherization assistance program. Um, we do help facilitate a uh, an income qualified program through the city and county of Denver. Um, and what we do through that is as we're helping folks qualify for that particular program, um, if we see that they might qualify for other programs in the state, um, we work with the city and county to be sure that they're referred to the appropriate organization um, in order to uh, you know take advantage of those incentives. Um, and then is Sun allied with uh, COSA and NIM discussions? Uh, we, we've definitely been staying in close in close touch with COSA through all of this. Um, 
we work closely with them on a number of things and this definitely has not been been an exception to that um to charlie's question i've had a 9200 watt grid tied since 2008 we'll add more solar and battery this year will that change my current net metering from excel um so uh, the short answer is unless there is any like change to the net metering policy, it shouldn't affect um, any expansions you do to your solar system. The asterisk or caveat that I'll put next to that is that currently in Colorado, um, investor owned utilities like Excel are able to net meter your system up to 200% of your annual electricity usage. So if building out your system in addition to that takes you over that 200% mark, um, there would be changes. But I doubt if you're working with a 9.2 kilowatt system right now, I, I doubt that an expansion would um, push you over that 200% mark. Of course, I cannot confidently say that because I'm not like actively reviewing your electric bills with you to see, <laughs> to see what that looks like. So um, that would be a good conversation to have with your installer as you're going through that process. Yeah. And if you don't mind, Tanner, I would just um, add to that, like, yes, to all of that. And then I would just add to um, the clarification that, you know, that that answer is assuming that nothing changes regarding how net metering policy works in Colorado right now. Like if you do it now, there there wouldn't be any impacts on your net metering. But, you know, we, we just can't say at this point um, if, you know, say a year or six months down the road, if there is a, a new um version of net metering policy in place in Colorado, what the answer to that question would be, <laughs> if that makes sense. Thank you, Emma. Awesome. Any other questions from y'all? Okay. Well, thank you all again so much for your time. Um, like I said, you'll be receiving an email tomorrow that has sort of follow-up to, to tonight's meeting. One thing I did forget to announce is that we're gonna be continuing this conversation on August 22nd. Um, and in the email you receive, you'll have an invite for that, for that meeting as well. So um, thank you all so much for your time and hope you all have a great night.